You start casting it, and yes. now you're going through this read-through process. Can you talk right. about the whole uh, read-through? What's the difference between a read-through and, say, a run-through or a walk-through or a break-on-through? A break-on-through. Well, a read-through is just where you sit down and read it, right? And that's the first thing we did with a few times. We sat down with friends and just read it, and I kind of warbled my way through the songs with the help of our director there, Joanne. Uh, Joanne Klein, brilliant, wonderful jazz singer deluxe Joanne Klein, who is uh, doing the direction here, and uh, we, we'd sing through it and stuff and get some feedback, but, but what we did most recently, we did a sing-through, read-through, stage, not stage reading, but sit-down reading, where, where the actors, re we actually rehearsed for 12 hours over a period of two weeks, and the actors kind of learned the songs, and, and, and uh, we did it in front of 40 people as... Uh, you know, you, you, you were there, you got some tape of that, and, uh, you know, it went quite well, we got some good comments, got the, you know, some good ideas to make some changes, and that's what we're doing now, we're working on the changes. I see. The so rewrites. What's the next step then? The, the next step is to work on the rewrites some more, and then hopefully we're going to be uh, going out to uh, do a workshop production out there at the Village Theater in the old barn, the little barn there. On the old theater there, and, uh, and where we'll actually perform it for a couple of weeks, you know, but a kind of a low budget production, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll actually have a few musicians, and uh, and everybody will be off the script, and, and it'll be like a you know a low budget production of it for a couple of weeks with you know with uh, uh, you know minimal production values, and 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 you know. We weren't, probably won't invite any critics or anything like that, so it'll be a, a low-risk situation in order to, to, to develop it, this I trip see. to its final level where we can really start thinking about doing it for the for the big public. I see. How 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 far is up? We're talking Broadway or well, Enum Claw? Uh, oh, you know, of course we'd like to see it go to Broadway. I mean, that's, that's you know, we're off-Broadway anyway. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then to the big, back onto the screen. Yeah. You know, it came off the screen, it needs to go back on the screen. Wait, was there actual a film made of this? I thought it wasn't actually produced into oh, a Oh, yeah, film. it was it, oh, okay. was. it was Roger Corman's first big hit. Oh, Roger I see. Blood, I didn't realize that. 1959. It was shot on the same set as Little Shop of Horrors. In fact, oh. they had the set for, for uh, 10 days. They finished Bucket of Blood in five days. Then Roger turned to Charles B. Griffith, the guy who wrote both screenplays, and said, do you have another thing? We, we still have this set for five days. And he said, yeah, I got this uh, thing, Little Shop of Horrors, and they did that second. So, yeah. and as you know, Little Shop of Horrors has been a tremendous success. And, uh, and uh, we're thinking bucket blood. No reason why it can't be, too. All right. Well, that's good. Um, if you could kill anybody in the world and get away with it, who would you kill and how would you do it? Uh, I wouldn't. I, I, I really wouldn't kill anyone. I mean, I don't, I don't have that kind of... Well, you're some kind of weird-ass queer, aren't you? What happened yeah. to Osama bin Laden, huh? Wouldn't you kill him? Uh, if you had a chance? I'd let him take care of himself. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't believe in, in meddling in fate and stuff. If I killed him, then something bad would happen to me. You know, I'm sure he'll self-destruct on his own accord. I see. So you're a lover, not a fighter, then? I'm a lover, not a fighter, basically. Okay. If you were to be knocked out by a bass, what kind of bass would it be? A bass? Yeah, a bass guitar, a bass electric guitar. Oh, I would take a, you know, like a, a you know, a big doghouse stand-up. Oh, oh, so you'd go acoustic, then? Yeah, I'd go acoustic. Because yeah. it'd be tough to swing it around your head, but once you got hit, you'd know it, right? Yeah, you'd know just it. Put it you just, right on your just ass. Could come right like El Cabon, right oh. through it, you know. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. What great thing would you attempt to do if you knew there was no chance you could fail? If there was no chance I could fail? Yeah. What great thing would you attempt to do if you knew there was no chance you could fail? Uh, I'd try to get married again. So your answer is fucking Cindy Crawford? Uh, no. No, I mean, no, she's, she's much too sweet. You really are some kind of weird theater homo, aren't you? Ah, uh, Jeez yeah, Louise, God. Yeah. Okay, well, um, 
What do you do with the cast members for for the reading? Are they pretty much going to be the guys, or after you're done with them, do you pretty much put them up against the wall and shoot them? No, no. We're, you know, they're some of the. You know, it all depends on scheduling and stuff. You know, some of them will work out and some of them won't. And and, and you know, it's they, they were all great. They did a great job. I, I, you know, and I wouldn't I wouldn't shoot any of them. Not one of them. Well. A couple. Of them. That's pretty exceptional for a cast, isn't it? Generally, you you want to execute a couple of your actors, don't yeah, you? Usually, but in this case, they, they were also great. I, I couldn't execute any. Is Dustin the killer? Who's the guy who's into blood in this show? Into blood? Yeah. Well, it's the original Roger Corman is totally into blood. I mean, you know, I see. So you're basically just picking up where he left off. We're and... just paying homage to okay. the vision. Okay. I got you. We right. believe that blood should be in the movies and uh, on stage and in fiction. And, uh, it's not on stage very often. Blood is not on stage well, very often. It's kind of hard to clean up, I bet. It is hard to clean up. It's hard to work with. You have to sometimes, you know what they used to do is those like red scarves they uh -huh. pull out and stuff. You yeah. know, like in Shakespeare and Love, they do one of those. Right. And, and, uh, that works well. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, uh, is there anything you want to put on the interview that I didn't touch on? Uh, no. I think what does Billy Ontiveros do with your show? Billy Ontiveros is like a spiritual advisor. He's, uh, he, uh, he advises from a spiritual plane. He comes in and, uh, and makes sure all the uh, uh, you know, nuts are tightened. And, 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 what does Dustin do? Dustin is my co-writer, co-author, and... Uh, and actually the man that uh, we can blame this on if it fails. I see. Who the fuck is Ricky Roder? Ricky Roder is a uh, uh, fictional character, pseudonym that I used to use on occasion. Really? But he hasn't surfaced lately. And I uh, say he might. What does Ted Ross do? Ted Ross is, he's kind of a jack of all trades. He's the He's kind of like the bag man. He, he, if there's a problem, he fixes it. What does Keenan Kelly do? Keenan Kelly, I don't know what Keenan Kelly does exactly. I've, I've been trying to figure that out for years. I know he does something, but, but it's a mystery to me. Okay, then. Doesn't he score your dope for you? He, I, he used to <laughs> when I was much younger. <laughs> but I no longer partake, so... His, his services are no longer his, required. His services are no longer required yeah, I see. in that department. I see. Okay, then. I think that's all I got. Uh, yeah, that's all I need. And no, no final comments, Nick? No final comments. All right.